my channel. Today I am super excited to share with you my project which I have made using a Raspberry Pi Pico and a 8 by 8 by 4 LED dot matrix. It is a simple project for Diwali. As a middle school student diving into the world of microcontrollers, this project has been an exciting learning experience and I would really like to share it with you. As you can see, this is the display I have made for Diwali decorations. It is displaying various icons and messages for Diwali. You can modify it to your own needs. It is a 16 by 64 display controlled by the Raspberry Pi Pico. So, my family recently gifted me a Raspberry Pi Pico. After going through some beginner projects, I decided to do a project which I had seen near Halloween time. It was called Petrifying Pico Pumpkins. I had found it on the Raspberry Pi news forum. It was originally done by kids of my age from a team at gurgalapps.com. I wondered if I could modify it for Diwali. So armed with a Raspberry Pi Pico, a breadboard and an assortment of jumper wires, I decided to order the only thing that I needed, the main thing of the project. Some 8 by 32 LED matrix displays from Robo.in. They came in good quality and I decided to use them right away. This is an 8 by 8 matrix. I do not know if the camera will pick this up, but 4 of them are connected in a chain. If we flip over, we can see that they are connected along these joints in what is rather like a daisy chain. There are also 5 pins coming out for simple SPI connections. There is also a place on the other side of this connection which allows us to connect these MAX 7219 powered dot matrix boards together. Before jumping straight into the project, I wanted to do some functional research on the board and get familiar with it. I quickly started searching and in the end, I found three valuable resources. The first resource I found was the original Gurgle Apps GitHub repository regarding the petrifying Pico pumpkins. They have some very nice fonts which I plan to use myself. Next, I found some information from microcontrollerslab.com. It provided me functional knowledge about the microcontroller on the Raspberry Pi Pico, how to interface it with the display and its functional workings. It contains some useful pin diagrams, some sample code and it also gave me a pointer for my third resource. This is a driver by Mike Kauser. I realized I will need it for controlling the Max 7219 module with information cascading. He has kindly uploaded it to his GitHub under a free license. Now, let's talk about some challenges and how I overcame them. If you want, you can skip this part and move on to the next chapter. The first challenge I was facing was with the display not working properly. It was stopping at times and sometimes not even turning on. I looked it up and quickly found this pinout diagram. I was currently using 3 words out 
what I should have been using 5 volts out or V bus at pin 40. It was a quick change. I just had to lift up the power and put it into pin 40. And now when I stop the code and restart it, Now, after restarting, we can see that the display is working nicely. Now, with the basic text working on a single bar, I decided to entangle multiple bars together like this before soldering them. As soon as I put a connection between these two, with two bars connected and with power from a Raspberry Pi 400, you can see it is glitching out. There is also a low voltage warning on the computer screen. Hence, we have renamed the file main.py and are going to connect it to a power supply using a charger. Now with the main file uploaded to the Pico and the Pico connected to the power supply, the display is working smoothly and properly. As you may notice, it is a linear display and that is where our third problem comes into play. Currently, with my Kauser's driver, it is possible to easily make a linear display. But what I wanted to do is to make the display a bit larger and rectangular. So it's possible to display images and multiple text messages at the same time. For the next challenge, I spent a few days figuring out how to modify my Kauser's driver to display larger images in a daisy chain. In the end, I ended up using subclassing and dynamic attributes to do the job. Because we want this configuration of the displays, let's see the changes which I have made to my Kauser's driver. I think when Mike wrote this driver for subclassing, it was not available. So I changed the code to implement the subclass for a frame of class. It simplified the coding quite a bit. Next, I changed the initialization method to take care of rectangular configuration of the bars. I replaced the hard core values with 8 of the matrix height and matrix width to physical variables and attributes which made the code readable for me and easy to change later on. In the show method, I had to add an extra loop to implement the vertical stack of bars. I think of them like pages. As you may be able to see, we are cross-referencing another library quite a bit. These are the images. Initially, I created quite a few of them by hand, but then I found a website. This is the image to byte array converter tool by Renzo Mishanti. It was extremely useful for this project. Instead of slowly creating byte arrays by hand and encoding them into hexadecimals and putting them in the code, I could simply put an image into this. It downscaled the resolution and gave me a byte array which I could use. Just in case you do not like the website and want custom designs, you can use pen and paper which is the slow method like I did before finding the website. As you can see, I drew it on a pixelated grid and then encoded the hexadecimals by hand. This is the moment you have been waiting for, the final product. But just before that, I wanted to show you how I soldered these. These 8x8 dot matrices originally come with straight pins to connect easily to a breadboard. But for soldering, you may need 
to bend them like this for easy connection. It is possible to do this by taking the holes, putting them together and bending them with some adequate amount of force. After that, after checking the connections to make sure that all of them align properly, you can put it in and solder them. I am using a fine tip iron and lead free solder to solder these pins together. Be careful while soldering. Do not touch the soldering iron tip with your hands. This is the end result we have gotten after completing the project and uploading the code. We have put some icons and some images. Alongside some text messages. There is both horizontal scrolling and vertical scrolling available. You can put any icon you wish. If you liked the project and would like to replicate it, I have uploaded all the files on GitHub. Thank you for watching.